let's take a look at communication implications of the Hawthorne studies. The Hawthorne studies were conducted from 1924 to 1933 at the Western Electric Hawthorne plant in Cicero, Illinois. In a series of experiments, some lasting many years, researchers attempted to investigate the effects on employee behavior and attitudes of a variety of physical, economic, and social variables. Carried out by Hawthorne engineers, these experiments were intended to discover the effects of variation in lighting on employee productivity. Using two groups of workers, the researchers gradually increased the level of illumination in one group, the experimental group, while keeping illumination constant in the other, the control group. In all other ways, the two groups were identical. In keeping with their initial hypothesis, the researchers found that the productivity of the experimental group increased along with the level of illumination. Strangely, however, the productivity of the control group increased as well. Furthermore, even when the researchers began to decrease the level of lighting in the experimental group back to its original level, productivity continued to go up. It even continued to increase as the lighting fell below normal levels. Only at the point when lighting levels were extremely low did worker productivity drop. The researchers were baffled by these results. Clearly, some variable other than the level of illumination had caused the increased production level. Some of the researchers speculated that participation in the experiment might be having some kind of effect on the workers, encouraging increased output. To investigate this alternative hypothesis, a second set of studies was set up. Again, the researchers concluded that increased productivity levels could be attributed mainly to the new supervisory system. In later years, this phenomenon, in which workers respond to the personal attention paid to them by supervisors, became known as the Hawthorne effect. For the first time, social scientists seem to have established the significance of the human element in the work process. Workers appeared to be motivated not merely by economic incentives, but also by their experience of and attitudes towards the work process itself. What workers were thinking and feeling while working became subject of intense scrutiny. Although there's plenty of critique, and we'll go to that next, the research of Mayo and his colleagues had a profound influence on the course of research in organizations for the next several decades. Unlike Taylor, Mayo argued that group cohesiveness could lead to a more cooperative and productive workforce. This discovery of informal work group was a catalyst for several decades of research on small group relations. While classical theorists argued that informal communication was largely de detrimental to the functioning of organizations, the human relations movement emphasized its positive social aspects and its contribution to worker satisfaction. The Hawthorne effect seemed to suggest a great deal of untapped potential in terms of managers' abilities to motivate workers. A happy worker is a productive worker became a mantra for the human relations movement. Impetus for Leadership Research With Mayo's emphasis on the importance of administrative elites appropriately trained in techniques of social control, later researchers attempted to establish the criteria for good leadership. The Hawthorne researchers were among the first to utilize naturalistic, qualitative methods in the workplace. The Hawthorne studies, coupled with Mayo's political philosophy, seemed to provide a solution to the intense industrial conflict that was pervasive in terms of a feature of the workplace in the 1920s and 30s. However, it quickly became apparent that there were a number of limitations to the Hawthorne studies.